I'm recording. Hello and welcome to all beautiful souls out there. You're listening to the Restore My Soul podcast with Princess Millens, your favorite grief coach and emotional wellness specialist. In this space, we will help those who struggle with grief and loss and have real conversations about how to overcome it in every area of life. Through our personal stories, practical information, and wisdom from Princess and her special guests. We are here to educate, inspire, and empower you with the strategies you need in your emotional healing journey. We do not offer medical advice, but we believe that we can all learn to heal by creating a mindset to grow past our pain and push toward our purpose. Our goal is to remind you that grief is a journey and you do not have to walk it alone, no matter what the pain or loss is. You can be restored and live fully in your purpose. So let's push through the pain together as we share our stories of resilience, one episode at a time. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Restore My Soul podcast. I am Princess Millens, your favorite grief and emotional wellness specialist here. And uh, we have another powerful episode for you today. And I just want to welcome you all in. We are here to help those who want to push past their struggle with grief and loss or anything that they've gone through and have real conversations. This is the place where we have real conversations about how to overcome those uh, struggles in every area of your life. And we're here to educate you and inspire you and to motivate you with the strategies and the things that you need in your emotional healing journey. So we are so excited uh, to be here today. I have a special guest for us today. We are here with uh, Reverend Kathleen Strozier. She is retired college administrator. I can really identify with that because I myself uh, taught in the classroom for 20 years in uh, middle school and high school. So she's a retired uh, college administrator, and she's also an ordained minister, has been in the ministry for several, several years, a mother to a grandmother of eight. I'm telling y'all, she don't look like it, okay? Mother to grandmother of eight, and um, I just want to welcome her to the stage right now, Reverend Kathleen Strozier. Thank you so for being here today. We are so excited that you're here. And uh, we look forward to what God has to say through your story, right? I know we're going to talk about, uh, and you're going to be sharing about uh, st your struggles with childhood uh, issues, marital issues, self-esteem issues, and things like that. And we want to make sure that uh, people get all that they need to, to set to be set free right to be set free from the things that still have them bound in this area so welcome so welcome 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 to the show Reverend Kathleen and uh we just gonna go ahead and dive into it if you if you don't mind okay I don't mind at all thank you Pastor Princess yes you're welcome uh we're gonna dive into it and you know it's so much uh, to your story. Your story is so uh, full and powerful and it has many facets, right? So I want to want you to kind of share with everybody, you know, uh, you know, how you grew up, uh, how you got to be this champion over these childhood issues and the things that we struggle with, especially as women, the things that we struggle with on a daily basis. Thank you so much. Uh, I grew up uh, the oldest of three kids, 
But I grew up in a home that was filled with childhood abuse. I saw things that I should not have seen as a child. I saw my father do things to my mom and hurt her. And I also grew up uh, being um, what uh, abused by people in my family. At the age of maybe from eight until about 12, somebody in my family sexually abused me. And I didn't say anything because I was told don't say anything because if you say something, they will not believe you. Yeah. So I didn't. Yeah. But I grew up, I did not want to go around them at all. So it went, it went on and on. So it took a toll on me. And then growing up, also when I was younger, I had a speech problem. I uh, stuttered. So I didn't yeah. want to talk in uh -huh. school. Wow. But I spent a lot of time reading books. I spent okay. a lot of time studying. So yeah. I did all that when I was by myself. But when it came time to talk, I was not that person that you call on to talk. Oh, I would wow. rather take an F in a class than to speak up. Oh, but wow. if you look at me now, you think, oh, no, that could not be you. Not yeah. as much as you like to talk. But that was just growing up. So, you know, I got, uh, after I got out of, uh, out of high school and then I just, I decided I needed to leave home because I was tired of all of that. So yeah. I got married to my childhood sweetheart. He was in the military. We was married. I thought everything was great. We like travel. I went to Kansas. I went to Kentucky. I went yeah. to Germany. I got a chance to go to like Switzerland, Italy. I traveled. So I thought everything was fine. Absolutely. I had two kids by him. So I thought, hey, finally got this right. I'm going to have a great life. But little did I know that he was a cheater. So that ended. But, wow. you know, it was okay because my thing is you experience things so you can learn things. Absolutely. And, I, and in that marriage, I learned a lot. I got to travel. I learned that I could pretty much take care of myself if I had to. Yeah. But I was always troubled because I kept having these vision and these dreams that something was going to happen to my mom. And mm -hmm. I kept telling everybody about it. Nobody yeah. would even listen to me. Yeah. My husband at the time, he thought I was crazy. He would not listen either. Doctors thought I was losing my mind. So then when I came home after having my second one, so then my father tried to kill my mom and wow. I was like, I tried to tell you all. Mm. That was what I was trying to tell you. I yeah. saw it, but I saw it in the opposite way. I saw oh. it that he had killed my mom and he lived, but that didn't happen. Wow. He shot my mom. She lost her arm and she lost some organs. Then he turned the gun on himself and he killed himself. Mm. And so I was just like, well, it's wow. over. It's over. Yeah. He can no longer. So yeah, I was, you know, it, I'm not saying I was okay with that, yeah. but I was okay that he couldn't hurt her anymore. Absolutely. 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 And that, that everything that you said so far is just, it's so much to unpack in there. Right. And even starting what you were saying, even starting from a young a young girl, you know, going through all the childhood traumas that you had to face. And a lot of times we face those things alone, especially as young as you were, eight to 12 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think a lot of uh, young ladies, a lot of people, they paralyze, they are paralyzed with the right. fear, like you said, the fear of being able to not tell anybody, you know, exactly. for fear of, you know, even what people think or, you know, they think they're going to kill that other person or they, right. they, they 
told that, you know, I'm going to harm somebody if you tell and things like that. Can you speak to um, kind of what that was like uh, and uh, kind of how you were able to kind of get out of that, that paralyzing fear to uh, be able to share? What well, happened? I was able to get out of it because they died. It was two of them. They both okay. died. So when they died, wow. yeah. I was just like, okay, you can't hurt okay. me anymore. You know, wow. and I know that's like really hard to say that when a person passes that you're mm -hmm. kind of happy that they're gone. But it wasn't so much I was happy that they was gone. I was happy that they could not hurt me. And they couldn't hurt anyone else because yeah. I knew about me, but I didn't know if they had hurt other people too. Wow. But yeah. I knew that what all they had done to me. Mm -hmm. So as I was growing up, I thought that, okay, nobody would even want me. That was, that was mm -hmm. the thing what I thought. I thought that nobody would even want me. So I was like, you know, I was looking for, someone to want me i was mm -hmm. looking for someone to love me and that started a bad pattern of me being attracted to the wrong ones attracted mm. to the ones that i didn't think that they was bad but they turned yeah. out to be bad Absolutely. they you know when they first started out they was all sweet and kind and everything but then eventually they started acting the same way as mm -hmm. the people who had hurt me. So mm -hmm. um, as I got older, I felt as if I had this magnet on my head just yeah. saying, hey, if you're a person that like a person that's going to listen to what you say, that's going to do everything that you want. I'm that girl. But I didn't yeah. want to be that girl. But I mm -hmm. felt like I was that way. For years and years and years until mm -hmm. maybe maybe six years ago. Well, no, yeah, about six years ago. Even mm -hmm. when God called me into the ministry, yeah, I didn't want to hear that because I knew all the things that had happened to me. Yeah. And I knew all the things that I had done because I was trying to prove that I was worth more than what I thought. So yeah. I was that person. I like did things. I mean, I did. I did things that now I like stop and think about it. And I'm like, wow, how did you make it this far? Yeah. Doing all the things that you did. Yeah. And I can only say it was God. God yes, kept me God. because he had work for me to do. Yes. But I did not feel that I was worth doing oh, wow. any of that because I was like, how am I going to preach God? Yeah. And I stutter. But then he yeah. took me to, to the Bible. Yes. Moses, Moses had a speech problem. Yes. And he said, I will, I will provide for you. And so that stuck with me. Yeah. But also in like doing that, walking in my calling, yes. I had a husband at the time that he did not care for women preachers oh, so that wow. caused the end of that marriage but yeah. it was like choose man choose god, god. i chose yeah. god because Amen. i'm like you will leave me at any time but That's i know it. with god god's gonna always be right there he would he never sure leave will. me so sure i chose him and ever since i've been walking and I've been talking, but I still felt it was something missing because mm -hmm. I didn't want to overstep anybody. I was right. in churches and I was that person that I would follow, but I never thought that I could lead. I didn't want to oh, yeah. overstep. I didn't want to well, overplay. You're saying I didn't something wanna... right there because that goes back to what you said about uh, feeling unworthy. Yes. Right. So yes. Kind of, kind of speak to that feeling of unworthiness and how that kind of filtered into all different areas of your life, even the church. Right. Right. It made me feel as if I need to stay in the background. 
I need to stay behind the scenes. I needed to wait and be told what to do. Mm. I couldn't just step out on my own because I was afraid that if I did that, somebody would start looking at my past. And they would start looking and say, well, you can't do this. You can't do that because you did this and you did that. And I didn't want that. I didn't want anybody to look in that closet. I didn't want them to open that closet. I didn't want any of that. So I stayed in the background and I did as I was told to do. But I felt like something was missing. I felt as if I wasn't really doing what God had called me to do. But I wasn't sure of what he wanted me to do. But I knew that that wasn't it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more than we would like to admit, is so many women out here that feel the same way. They they have the, the similar experience of that feeling of unworthiness. They want to stay in the background. You know, I know how that feels myself. I want to always just stay in the background. I just want to follow. I don't want to be a leader. I just I'm just comfortable, right? You're right. I'm in yes. this comfortable place. And when God is kind of pushing you, saying, no, 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 daughter, you're gonna, you're gonna be out there in the front. And right. we don't know how to take that, right? We don't know how to take it. We but run. We know we run and we know that we have to be obedient. Right. Ultimately, right. we have to be obedient. And there's yes. no there's no excuse in the world that we can ever give God that he won't come back like he did Moses. He won't come back with something. Well, what you got now? Every time right. Moses think Moses had like five, five things that <laughs> was wrong with him, right? And every single time God came back with something, well, what are you gonna say now? Okay, I'll right. give you okay, I give you since you can't talk, I give you Aaron. How he he'll, he'll just tell him what to say and he'll say it for you. You know, well, what if they don't believe me? You know, most right. went on and on and on, right? He we did, did the same thing. Right. And it goes back to what you were saying about feeling like. You are unworthy. So yes. I want you to speak to the woman right now. Speak to the even the young lady right now that's coming up and they have had similar things that happened in their life. They had childhood traumas. They had a failed marriage or things that happened in their life, right? They feel like because of their past that that, that God could, could not possibly use them, right? Speak to them and what words of encouragement would you give them uh, to keep going and to know that, you know, that they can do it and they can move in the way that God wants them to move? Okay, I would say, regardless of what has happened to you, regardless of how you grew up, regardless of anything that you have been in, you are worth more than you could ever think that you are. God created you in his image. God created you for a purpose. He ordained you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. So he already knows what's going to happen to you before it happens. But he has already placed things inside of you that when you walk through these things, when you don't quit, when you keep going through these things, you're going to see that those was just a test to get yeah. you to where he wants you to be. Because he knows if not, we'll stand still. Like you said, we'll be comfortable. Yeah. And if you have gone through anything, if anybody has abused you in any way, do yeah. not stay in that situation. You are worth more. You can do better by yourself. You do not need anybody to tell you that you're worth this. You do not need anybody to tell you that you're pretty. Tell yourself that. I pass every morning when I get up, I get dressed. And I tell myself I'm beautiful because God told me that I am. So you have to tell yourself that. And you keep telling yourself that over and over again until you believe it. That way, when Slick Rick come up and tell you that you're beautiful, you don't need him to tell you that because you already know. And if you need help, do not be so proud that you don't ask for help. 
tell somebody uh, what is happening yes. to you. Get some help. Yes. Do not stay in what you're in. Because if I had stayed there, I wouldn't even be here today. Yeah. Because he had put so much, it, so much. Yeah. But I kept hearing his voice. But I kept yeah. saying, mm -mm, not me. No, no, no. You're not yeah. calling me if for that. Yeah. But yeah. now it seemed like in this last month or so. Well, in this last year. Yes. Because I decided that I was done at work. I had worked 26 and a half years at my job. Yeah. And I was ready to try something different. I wanted to just leave and retire. I wanted yeah. to put more on what he had called me to do. I wasn't sure what and how, yeah. but I knew that I had to have time. And yeah. I couldn't do that at work. So yeah. in this last couple of months, yeah. Oh my goodness. He has, he, God has just blessed me. I have been, I have been in the ministry for yes. over 11 years. Oh, wow. But I was just as a life minister. Uh -huh. And on June 25th of this year, I was ordained in a church that I had never even been to before. I had just started wow going there after COVID, you know, when lots of places closed down. So I Absolutely. started going there. And so yeah. the pastor of that church, he said, I've been expecting you. And I'm like, hmm. yeah. so he <laughs> told me all about me. And I'm thinking, Come who on. told you? And he yeah. said, God told me. God did. Yeah. <laughs> he said, God told me. He said, so yeah. my job, what I'm supposed to do is ordain you. He yeah. said, and when our he said, when I ordain you, he said, I need for you to put on your skates because you're getting ready to go. He said, because God is getting ready to send you places that you never thought that you would go. So last yeah. month I sat and I created a uh, logo for my ministry that I plan to start. Okay. And it's called right touch of love ministries Amen. because we all need that right touch from God. Yes, we Even do. though when I was younger, I had the bad touch. Yes. But now I have the right touch. And so yes. I want to help others that have had the same type of thing happen to them. I want to be able to help them to find mm -hmm. their strength so yes. that way that they can move forward in what he has called them to do. Absolutely. Well, that's a wonderful thing. And it's so, so needed. It is so, so needed. I don't really believe that that uh, people really understand the magnitude of that type of ministry and how needed it is, you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, we know that toxic things that happen in our lives, the traumas, uh, the pain that happens in our lives, it can be a last, it can have a lasting effect right. on us. And it filters into every other area of our life, right? It even does. If, even if it happened in childhood, it filters into our adulthood. And if yes. we don't have the right help, if we don't have the right uh, things in place, if we don't have the right surroundings, we don't have the right support systems, right? We don't have right. the right church, right, to go to. We can find ourselves still struggling. So I'm so right. glad that we have we had this conversation today. I know there were many, many people be blessed uh, by this broadcast. Um, and I thank for thank God for you and your courage and your ministry to be able to share your story with the world and just know that we love you. We continue to pray for you, and we know that God thank is gonna you. do great things through you in this ministry. All right. So before we go, I want you to kind of tell the people how they can connect with you and how they can follow you or, you know, anything that you got going on. Hi. Okay. You can reach me by email uh, at K period Jabez. That's J A B E Z nine nine at gmail.com. 
or you can reach me on that old faithful Facebook. I'm listed on the Facebook as Kathy Redden Strozier. You can reach me there. And if you just need to talk, if you just need somebody, anything, I will be available. Weddings, uh, counseling, whatever, I'm available. All right. Well, we thank you so much again for being here. Um, we we love your testimony and uh, just keep sharing your story. I want to encourage you to just keep sharing your story. Keep I share it. Every chance I get, if anybody asks, I'll definitely tell it. <laughs> Absolutely. And we thank you for it. Okay. Thank so you. We'll see you on uh, the next episode. Hopefully you'll come back and see us soon. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And you have a blessed week. And thank you again for having me. All right. Love you. Love you too. All right. All right. Now, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here at the Restore My Soul podcast, this episode. I hope it blessed you as it has blessed me. Um, Reverend Kathleen Stroger had a powerful testimony. And uh, we know that no matter what we have gone through, that God is able he is able, he specializes in the things that are impossible, and he is able to carry us through every trial, every situation, and every circumstance, and we thank God for today. So thank you for joining us today on this episode, and we pray that we'll see you soon in the next episode. Thank you for joining another episode of Restore My Soul podcast. Be sure to listen and watch each week as we continue the conversation on how to bounce back from the setback of grief and loss and to become resilient so that you too can thrive in life. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new episodes and share this with as many people as possible so they can be encouraged in their emotional wellness journey. We invite you to follow Princess Millens on all social media platforms and on the website at princessmillens.com. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next episode of the Restore My Soul podcast.